Ekestad's Video Productions presents from Louisville, Kentucky, the first annual Derby City Classic. Along with the legendary Weenie Beanie Staten, I'm Bill and Cardona's. We're at the Executive West Hotel in Louisville where there's this, ma this uh, multifaceted event comprised of one pocket, nine ball, and straight pool. The bank pool, excuse me, one pocket, bank pool, and nine ball. Yes. Yeah, the bank pool just finished and Nick Varner won the bank pool defeating... I think it was uh, Tony uh, Colbert, I believe it was. Coleman. Coleman. Yes. Wasn't a, really a household name, I'm sorry. Tony Coleman in the finals. Okay. Okay, well, I'll get it together. Anyways, uh, the feature match this evening, two fine players, Wade Crane from Dallas, Texas, Danny DiLiberto from Miami, Florida. I do believe he's residing in Miami, Florida right now. Is yes. Okay. Uh, but Wade Crane is really playing well right now. I think he's playing much better this year than he was in the past several years. Now, Wade Crane, he won the lag and he elected to break the balls, which is a big advantage. And it looks like he's put a pretty good break on here. And uh, I don't know, I think Danny will probably come off of the 11 ball and try to place the cue ball underneath the 15. That's just one. What do you think he'll do? Yeah, well, that's one option uh, that's available, Penny. Uh, he's looking at the eight. Uh, possibly try to do something with the 8. How he can do the same thing over there, I think. Now, had the 10 been a little closer to the side rail, he could have banked the 8 into the ball, setting the cue ball up table. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he can afford to do that because the 1 will pass in between the rail and the 10, pocketing the 1. He'll allow, he'll allow Wade that shot if he goes up table off the 8. You know, one thing I like about the one pocket game is there's so many different balls you can shoot at in so many different ways. I think he's now made up his mind to kind of just hit the one ball, put the cue ball down about where he's pointing his stick, somewhere in that area, and bringing the one ball back on this side. No? He's going to go with the eight ball, and I like the other shot a little better than this. Well, it worked out okay, but uh, he's left the bank on the 11. It didn't work out too well, I don't think. If uh, Wade would happen to make this 11 ball, uh, he would have to start off with a tremendous advantage. He's certainly uh, going to like his position, even if, uh, even if he isn't able to pocket the 11. You see what would have happened if he would have pocketed this ball? It would have been... Uh, well, he didn't have the best of shots. He would have been a little shorter with the cue ball if he had hit it a little fuller. Both of these players play in Steve Miserec's senior tour. Danny, uh, a little older than Wade, but they're really familiar with one another. They understand one another's games, and that's kind of helpful. Danny's playing a billiard, hitting the 15, billiarding, and the 11 with the cue ball. Now, Beanie Wade can go through the offense here and bank the 12 ball. Uh, I don't know if you would shoot a shot like that. Absolutely, I'd shoot that. It's a perfectly safe shot. He's going to go into the seven with the cue ball, and there's hardly any chance of leaving a shot. Uh, he has Danny in a pretty bad trap right here. Well, you, you know as well as anyone, the break is such a beneficial shot in one pocket, and when you break the balls, you better win. That game, you know, the game you break them. If you don't, the momentum certainly swings in the other other players' favor. Danny's trying to play off the rail and trying to make the 12 ball, which he did. A very good shot there. That was an excellent shot. So, actually, Danny's been under a lot of pressure ever since the ball's been broken. He wasn't able to really execute the first shot after the break as accurately as he needed to. And since then, he's been under a lot of pressure just trying to get out of the break. Yeah, had uh, Billy made either one of those bank shots, uh, he would have been a tremendous favorite in this game. Four, six, eight, ten, thirteen. That means there's two balls. Green has two balls, and the balls certainly are, are favoring him. Yes. He's just going to tickle this 14 ball, go over to the rail, and maybe bring the cue ball back into the stack. Yeah, it's important for, for, for Wade to uh, hide the... The cue ball from the 15. The 15's on Wade's side of the table. And he's done his job. He would have liked to have frozen the cue ball yes. on the balls, but uh, he, he wasn't able to do that. But uh, nevertheless, it was still fairly effective. Really limiting DiLiberto offensively what he can do. 
He's trying to bank this ball and bring the cue ball back around for position on the 15. Oh, I like the one rail bank because it carries natural too. position. Look what he has done here. <laughs> he played a combination on it. Now he's only got one shot here at this shot. He will shoot to 15 and try to put a little reverse English on it, forcing the cue ball a little bit forward and, uh, you know, bucket it down here and hide in the 15. If he doesn't make it, he'll hide it down here. I think he's made it, though. Yeah, it looks like he's hit it hit rather it nicely. Two balls apiece. This is a race to three, like the bank pool. The bank pools are also a race to three, and it's a it's a very short race. So therefore, the player who jumps out of the gate is a pretty big favorite in the in the match. Particularly if the if the player breaks the the, the first of the first break. You know, if he's the, if he uh, can break Wade's break and win the first game, be Liberto, That is, he'll be a big favorite in this. Match. Yes, he would because he would be getting an extra break from there out. He has worked his way out of this, uh, the, the break. He's uh, about an equal, I'd say the balls are equally favoring each other. Right. And uh, I think Denny has taken a three ball to two lead, or three, six, five, three, six. No, it's two balls each. So he's gotten out of the trap. And uh, the balls do not favor either player here. Yeah, the position somewhat neutralized itself. Uh, in the last couple of shots, De La Perla at the table. First game's tied up at two apiece. He doesn't really have anything. He just probably just better off doing something real simple, not allowing Wade to see the 10 ball on this side of the table. When he leaves the table will be probably the thing he should do. He wants to protect the 10 ball. The 10 ball on his side of the table is a big ball for him to protect. Cuts off the entire upper table. Wade, Wade cannot leave the cue ball at the other end of the table where he's standing right now because of the 10 ball being there. So therefore, that's the ball he needed to protect. <clears throat> Wade, on the other hand, has to protect the uh, the 8 ball. Now what he's trying to do here, he's trying to bank the 6 down into the 8 ball and put the cue ball right in the center of the table up there. He didn't quite get it over there, which kind of left uh, Danny a, almost a free shot at the 10 ball. Yeah, it's almost free. Even if it wasn't totally free, you have to go for this because of the potential he has out there with the one ball. The one ball is a good break ball, possibly, that might open up the rack and enable him to win game number one. But, he but, could elect to even just try to sense this ball. Oh, he went for the possibility. He didn't want to leave the cue ball up above that 13 ball there that he just tickled a little bit. Now, if you got a little bigger pockets, these pockets are a little bit snug here. So, therefore, they don't take quite as many liberties. Yeah, th these are four-inch pockets, and uh, you really can't gamble as much on four-inch pockets as you can on four-and-a-half, four-and-three-quarter-inch pockets. You know, you have, you have more offense on a larger pocket table. This diamond table, which is a beautifully crafted table, Coca Bola wood is it's probably the one of the most beautiful tables. It I've really ever seen. is. I have not heard a complaint from the players all week about the tables, how they roll and everything. Every tournament you go to, the players always complain a little bit about the condition. But with uh, Greg Sullivan and Diamond tables, they they have this set up and they have worked on them and they really have them level and they play well. Now Danny's going to have to be careful here because he really doesn't have anything offensive offered to him uh, from this position. And he has to be very careful not to give Wade a free bank on the six ball here. So therefore, he's, his shot selection is very crucial at this stage of the game. If he opts to go off the 14, he may leave Wade a free bank on the six. So he's gonna have to take care of the cue ball. What would you do here, Benny? Well, I'm saying he's shooting into the balls to break them up a little bit. And in fact, that was a very good shot. Yeah, that was a very well thought out shot, not allowing Crane any offensive shot coming to the table. And that's what he needed to do, and he certainly has done his job. Now Wade has to play really passively and just bunt something to a rail, possibly on his side of the table, if possible. Okay, that wasn't really that good, because now he's left Danny a bank on the five. I don't know if he can pocket it. I think but, he'll shoot the eight ball here and probably force the cue ball over there for a possible shot on the one ball next. All right. He'll have to hit this with quite a bit of authority. 
He doesn't have a real good angle. It's rather awkward on the eight. He's going to have to force it to hit it with some speed. That's, oh, that's about as well as you could hit a ball, isn't it? <laughs> he got over there. You're absolutely right. Look here. He has a easy shot. He has played beautifully so far. Well, had Wayne been able to put the one ball on his side of the table, Danny couldn't have done that. That's right. But he was in a pretty tough position shooting over a ball over the stack, uh, which actually limited his ability to stroke the ball well. Danny's playing well to be able to even draw the ball like that on the six ball. Well, the last two shots he shot, being he was a strong indication. Or he's totally prepared two. to play. Mm -hmm. He now has six balls. Wade has two. After Wade broke the ball, starting out two to nothing, you know, he certainly has done a lot of work coming back in this first game. Well, he was trying to hold that up for the five ball and ended up missing it, but still, it was a very good inning for Danny there. Those yeah, two he balls. Was very are productive. Balls. Uh, in, the, in that regard, very productive. Wayne now is really at a disadvantage, trailing two balls to six. Balls favoring De Liberto. Looks like he sees something in the stack. He's playing this two ball off of the 14. Let's he's going to have to watch the cue ball here. He Not only, it. yeah, he did a real, real uh, fine job on that particular shot. Had he positioned the cue ball solidly behind the six, he would have had Danny in a lot of trouble. What he did, he opened up a lot of balls in, you know, in scoring position, what I call it, that are open in the event that he gets a shot. The way they were, they were tied up. It was four balls there that were tied up. And even if he would have gotten a shot from one of the other balls, he had to get those apart at one time or another. I also would like to mention that we have Diane, Diane Crane in the booth with us. And she's an avid pool fan and player, I might add. She plays quite well. And I know that she would like to learn more about the one-pocket game. And But, you know, hanging around Billy, or Wade, I should say, certainly is an advantage in picking up a lot of different things playing one pocket in different games. Well, you learn about a lot about the offense part of it. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, defense is not one of his long suits, but I did learn a lot about the offense. But I think one pocket's hard for the ladies um, because there's so many options in it. And, you know, indecision's not one of our, you know, <laughs> well, you're, 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 strong suits. Well, you know, in defense of the ladies, you're 100% correct. There's a lot of decision-making playing one pocket. And since the ladies haven't had much experience playing the game of one pocket, it's really difficult for them to make those decisions because they don't have the knowledge. Right. Yeah, we haven't been playing pool as long right. as the men. Exactly. Well, you've been, you know, eight ball, nine ball, yeah, you, 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 the girls, or with the women, I should say, have been playing those games for long enough now to have acquired, you know, good knowledge with those particular games, but not one pocket. Game number one goes to Danny DiLiberto. He leads in the short race to three, one to nothing, and also has the advantage of breaking the balls. That spells trouble for Wade. Yes, sure does. Yeah, he looked like he was in control after the break, and uh, Danny was fortunate to tie it up two balls to two, but uh, that happens. And then that one shot that Wade wasn't able to get the one ball on his side of the table, that was his undoing in that particular rack. Okay. But Danny came back with a couple good shots. Yeah. Pocketing a ball on the break, but he really didn't open up the balls as nicely as he wanted it to. Even though he pocketed a ball on the break, he, uh, he should have gotten a better opportunity than the one he ended up with, but uh, that's just the way the game is. I do find this game fascinating. Uh, I got interested in it being around Wade, um, but it is a d difficult game to take up after so many years of you know nothing but nine ball and. Uh, it is a fascinating game. Seemed like he was a little lax there on that shot. And he allowed the cue ball to get away from him there, Beanie. Well, Danny showed a little weakness. That's the first weakness that he has shown. He had an excellent shot to bank the 11 across the corner with position on the two to get a quite a few, well, be very offensive and maybe get three or four more balls. Now, Wade has a little bit of a control shot here. He can bank this two over toward his hole. But he's got to be extremely careful not to hit it too hard. Well, the problem with that shot, Beanie, and you know as well as anyone, is the position of the cue ball. In order to bank the two across the corner, he's going to have to shoot over two balls, it looks like. And uh, that's, not, that's not something that really is going to be easy to well, execute. He's elected to kick at it. If he hits this accurately, I, I like a, 
A lot of good things can happen for him here. That's not bad at all. That's a very good shot. He, he's gone on the offense now with that one single ball there. It puts him on the offense. Now keep in mind, the, you know, he can, he can pocket the two if Danny gives him a shot, and maybe the 11, but he's going to be very hard pressed to get any more than two. So if Danny does have an offensive shot, uh, you know, he may fare better opting to shoot it if he does have one. I don't know if he does. I can't, can't see if he can see the seven. If he can see the seven, uh, he might be better off just going ahead and trying to bank it in. I think he's shooting the other ball that's beside of the seven ball there and just trying to park the cue ball in the stack there. That's what he has done, and he hit it beautifully. He certainly did. I don't know if he's going to get the ball, but he hit it very accurately. And with the right speed, so you know yes, where did. it is. And speed, you know as well as anyone wants to get. <laughs> speed is so important playing one pocket. Playing one pocket, it is. But it looks like he's opened up the door a little bit on the bank on the 15 here. I do believe there's a there's room for him to pocket this cross corner. If he doesn't, he can kiss it off the two ball. Ooh, he got away with it. He's, a, he's ended up with an awkward angle on the two. I don't think he can do much with the cue ball. Long yeah. and straight, and if he tries to cheat the pocket, he might miss the ball. Even though it's as close to the pocket as it is, sometimes this ball is missed. I think missed. he's going to try to draw the ball to the right and get over behind the 11, which he did great. Now, he will pocket this 11 ball and go up and just maybe... He can do it two ways. He can hit this very gently, come back into the 13, or hit it pretty hard and go up there and try to break up those balls, which that's what he tried to do. Right. Either shot was it was well, okay. Well, he came out with the five-ball combination. Nine-five combination looks pretty good. So, when you uh, considering the position that he started in, he's been really productive in this inning. Ooh. A little careless. Right I think there. he was too. Careless. Yes. You know that that particular shot demanded more than a one or two stroke. You know preliminary. Yeah, I don't think he feel looked at it very carefully there. It did not look like that hard a shot. No, it wasn't, and he missed it by uh, a considerable well, a couple margin. of inches there almost. And he certainly has opened the door for DiLiberto here. Something that he really couldn't afford to have done. Look what a nice shot he did there. He tickled that four ball and knocked it down where it would go into the well, pocket. Well, if the four ball goes, then he can eliminate the 13 next. That'll really open up the entire side of the table. He can go two ways here. He can go for the 13, come back for the, the 14 where he is, or the eight. He's got all kinds of options here. He elected to come for the eight, which is... Danny works really well amongst the balls when he's close up because he's a good straight pool player. I was just going to yeah. say that. And so he definitely knows how to run the balls. Yes. Therefore, whenever you're playing a down table game, you've got to be particularly careful when you play a player the caliber of a DiLiberto because he understands, you know, little ticky shots and understands patterns and how to run balls. So therefore, if you make a mistake when the balls are at the foot end of the table, it can be quite costly playing DiLiberto. Looks like this time... Uh, once again, he's proven that uh, if you make a mistake, he's going to hurt you. Now, apparently, he needs two balls. I believe he has six at this point. Well, if he only needs two balls, he shouldn't get careless here or foolish. He should just actually cinch this ball, putting himself on the hill, and then his job with them would be to reposition the balls on the table, putting them in a, in a more difficult position for Wade to, 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 to get them. Yeah, we, he should put them down. He should make this ball, cinch it, and then start the balls, putting them down table behind the line. And then if he would happen to make a mistake, Wade could only run a couple of balls. And that's what we refer to as playing the score. Yes. Yeah, when you play the score well, when you're a good manager, you make, you make your opponent uh, work hard to win and uh, frustrate him and then eventually break him down. It's the players that don't take advantage of, of situations like the ones Danny's confronted with. And they don't take advantage of, the, of, of those uh, situations. And they get careless or foolish. And they allow their, uh, their opponent to have air and breathe freely and get back in stroke when they have them on tilt. So if Danny plays solidly for the remainder of this game, he'll not only win this game, but he'll send a message to Wayne. And uh, sometimes uh, it's difficult to come back. You know, Billy, at this time, while Danny's uh, cogitating what he's going to do here, I would like to say that this Derby City Classic is really quite a classic.
pool championship in itself. And we are in a beautiful hotel here, one of the finest venues I have seen for a pool tournament in a long time. Uh, it certainly is. There's, there's uh, exactly 11 tables on the tournament floor, and there is one table that's closer than four or five feet from the next one, so therefore there's plenty of room to play, a lot of seating capacity in the room. And how many entries did they have in the tournament? Oh, in the bank pool tournament, they had 140 entries, and in the one-pocket tournament, I believe there was about 130, approximately. The nine ball is the... Uh, the next tournament, and that'll probably begin in a, in a couple of days. And I anticipate them getting about maybe 200 or 200 plus yes. in, the, in the nine ball. Our producer said there are 19 tables here. Well, he's correct. There are 19 tables, but I was talking about the specific tournament area where it's, where it's blocked off. There are other tables in the back where they put players like, <laughs> like Pat Fleming to play their matches. <laughs> oh, in the meantime, uh, Wade is getting back into this game. If he can make this 14 ball, yeah, he I certainly think is. he has come up a very good on this 10 ball. Now, if he could shoot this 10 into this corner and put the cue ball into the yellow ball, the one ball over there on the left hand side of your screen, he can knock it over in the scoring position. I believe he needs all the balls. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Benny, that type of a shot, it's just a, beautifully, a beautiful shot when it's, when it's executed right. I think that's what he'll be trying to do. Watch the yellow ball over there. There it comes. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. All of a sudden, from nowhere, he's back into this game. And now uh, both players are going to need one ball, if I'm not mistaken. No, well, Danny apparently needs, Danny needed another one. Danny uh, needed two the balls. The way they're going. Well, that was a great run out by Wade there. We've got to get a comment from Diane here. Okay. okay. Right. Let's do that. Well, obviously, this is the all-new Wade. <laughs> <laughs> Unfamiliar to me. <laughs> I don't understand no. what you mean by that. Dude. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was a very nice run. But once again, his offense is, it can be phenomenal. It certainly can. And, and do you think the way at this time is playing a little bit better than what you've seen him play in the past? Definitely. And Definitely. what do you think, what do you, would you attribute that to? Well, I think he's been playing more. Um, he's lost some weight, uh, you know. But he's been playing a lot. Uh, actual in you know in combat action and uh, I think that helps a lot well that that helps tremendously because if you're on the rail if you will that's you know that's, that's not not playing and watching if you're on the rail too long you get a lot of rust on you and then when you finally do get to the table you get a little doggish and nervous and if you don't perform well it'll, it might be some time before you get out there again but if you're playing regularly and you, and you're competitive if you happen to hit a stroke and then keep it for a while, you build a lot of confidence and a reflex in your game when you're, when you're playing match play or when you're playing tournament play. Exactly, I agree. It's a, it's a lot different just hitting balls and uh, being under the gun. Uh, Wayne definitely has the uh, superior position here. If he isn't able to see the 14, that's a big ball for Danny to protect. I don't know if he's protected it or not. Then Wayne has to do something very simple, not to uh, not to lose his strong, strong position that he has. Possibly, well, the 14 is a big ball, and he can't afford to leave that ball sticking out there for Danny. He's going to have to try to move it in some way. You know, I, I thought he shot a good shot, but I don't. Totally agree with the speed that he hit it with. Backing the, uh, well, I don't know if he had a pocket. Maybe he did, did. He have a pocket? I uh, I asked Beanie. I said uh, I I totally agreed with the shot selection, but I didn't agree with the speed that he hit it with. I myself would try to reposition the cue ball at the other end of the table, using all the balls on Wade's side of the table as blockers, ending up down the other side of the table, on the other side of the table, creating big problems for DiLiberto.
Well, he could have shot it softly and just knocked it over there and left the cue ball way down at the other end. But he was trying to play the ball off of the ball that was next to the corner pocket over there. I believe is why he shot it so aggressively. And the other thing was there were no balls there in that cluster of balls around the spot that would fit into Danny's pocket. So he had uh, what we call a free shot at it. And that's the offense coming out. It's a okay. beautiful Diane says he's offense. <laughs> Mr. He's offense. Well, he's always been an offensive player. Uh, I, I like myself either taking a scratch and shooting it into the uh, into the Danny's uh, side of the, of the rack or actually going off the 10, repositioning the cue ball in the rack area. That's not too bad. Leaving a lot of distance. Distance is always is always a good ally to have. Yeah, if you can keep that cue ball way down there on the end rail with nothing to fit in his pocket, sooner or later they'll make a mistake. Right now, Danny has a couple of options here. Uh, I see one just kicking at the five ball, and he doesn't want to leave the cue ball there for a bank on the three ball, which is the red ball there. Are you talking about kicking it to the long cushion? Playing rail first before the five yes. or the short cushion? Rail first. That's what I like. I like rail first. first. Hitting, hitting the five and, and both the five ball and the cue ball should eventually end up near the bottom cushion. I'll tell you what Danny is studying right now. He's studying one of those straight pool dead shots, and I can tell you exactly what it is. Shooting into the eight ball, making the two ball hit the 15, the 15 kissing off the four or the 11, and then hitting the nine and the nine ball going into the pocket. Yeah, well, now, that, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> take. I'm gonna, that's a great observation. Why are you and, watch? And, you watch, no, watch this is, nine ball. No, that is a great watch observation. Watch the eight ball. Shot right into the eight ball, and it did exactly as I said. He was a little bit unlucky. Very unlucky, but <laughs> yes. but uh, nevertheless, he chose the right shot. Uh, undoubtedly, chose the right <laughs> shot. And I remember back in the old days, if you will, I used to play a lot of one pocket in, in, in nine ball back on the East Coast where Weenie Beanie was from. And they said to me, you better be careful when you play Weenie Beanie. Don't leave any dead balls in the rack because if you leave anything in that rack, he'll <laughs> pick it out. He's the best in the world at picking out balls out of the rack. Once again, the <laughs> I'm rail I'm the rail gonna, I'm gonna add right. to that. <laughs> Minnesota Fats, the only thing he ever got, let me have the best of it. He said, you know the stack as well as I do. He gave me a tie. Oh, <laughs> that was very generous of him. That's right. You know that's the only thing. But if you notice, he shot exactly the shot, and I told you how the balls were going to react. Yeah. Pat Fleming, our director, would you put a replay on that, please? <laughs> yeah, Danny was a little unlucky not to get a shot there. I don't know if he should. He's going to position the cue ball behind the eight. He's here. trying to go behind the eight ball, which is the black ball over there. And if he's able to get it there, you know, then the, he'll he'll be productive. But if he allowed Wade to see the three, he certainly has made a mistake. He cannot see the three. Not well enough to bank it across the corner. What he will probably do is try to bank this ten ball over in position, or he's going to try to kick it in. Oh, no. See, I wouldn't shoot this shot. What I would be saying to myself at this time is, can I reposition the cue ball at the other end of the table near the upper left-hand corner? How yeah. can I get it there? I'll just take an intentional scratch, and I'll just shoot it up there. That's it what I would have done. not have been a bad shot. You're right. Now, this way, he lets him kind of get out of the trap. Danny can hit this ball. He's looking at it. It's not... He's not a real good bank at it, but he can uh, shoot it. He's looking. Well, he's, he's looking, looking to, to try to bank it. I think he's looking. To, well, I, I'd be looking to come off the eight, possibly going behind the ten softly, maybe congesting the balls a little more on that side of the table and knocking the ten away from the pocket. No way. No. <laughs> no. That's not even an option, Billy. He will shoot. The, I hate to, to disagree. You think? Well, if the bank's not available, I'm saying. Come off the eight and not come back into the ten with the cue ball. Yeah, you know, even if you hit it well, really you're not going to scratch. Shot. He's just trying to bank this ball over toward his hole and position the cue ball behind the eight. Well, the ball obviously could bank. bank and, you know, yeah. That this eliminates all shots if the yes. ball banks. Well, I was I was talking about hitting the eight not hard, softly, so I would create some congestion over there, tying up balls, yeah. and this softly coming behind the ten. Now let's take a look at that ball that Beanie picked out of the stack, the nine ball, and how it's he hit it. the eight ball right at the uh, spot. It's going to go into the six. The six is going to hit the fifteen. Then it's going to kiss off the four. Then it's going to kiss off the eleven, and then hit the nine ball into the corner pocket. Watch this in slow motion. 
Did you see the four move be prior to the, the nine moving? Yes. Good call. And I saw it kiss off the other balls, too. If, yeah, I think uh, that's a great shot there. Our producer did that. That is trying to cut the 15 ball over our nearest hole. You would be a great consultant. <laughs> to have yeah you know, in a match in other words you match up like saying like uh, yeah I'll play eight to seven or, or nine to seven I'll play even I'll play those games providing that I have a, a consultant so you can have a consultant and I'll have a consultant <laughs> you know what I mean I'd pick you as my consultant. Four yeah. shots? Sure, but we can't execute where the hell, but we're shit. But, uh, <laughs> no, I agree with you uh, there totally. Oh, sorry. Well, you, you're just going to have to settle You know, they do have, they do have well, consultants the, uh, consultant. on the golf course. You know, they got a caddy that can tell the golfer what to do, what club to use, and what shot to shoot. There you uh, go. I think you ought to be able to carry one around with you. I can pick out a few of them out of the rack, I think. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Wow, that was a big, big ball there. If he had made that, he would have been a definite favorite. And He's reason, still a favorite in this game. Oh, and the reason he didn't pocket that ball, which really isn't a valid reason, but anyways, the reason why he didn't pocket that ball, he played too much cue ball. I think it only had about a half a pocket, too. Oh, Danny, is that true? Yes. Well, then I apologize. Danny's just going to sacrifice. Well, looky here. Now, there is a very bad mistake. Danny's got one thing going for him with that particular shot and a mistake. There's only a few balls that will score at this point, mainly the two, three, which is the red ball there and closest to the cue ball. And he's trying to see where he wants to get. He's a little unlucky. All the balls are tied up on the side rail there. He was trying to break them up. He's going to come this out is, of it okay. He's going to come out real good. <laughs> Diane. We said, Diane said that's all of his straight pool knowledge how, how to get position on the three there. He's just going to shoot this three ball into the corner and draw the cue ball down here softly. And he got below it a little bit too far. Now he can shoot this and then go up around the seven ball, which is the ball in the center of the table up there and try the 13 ball, he can pocket it. Let's see if he can get position on the 13. Got a nice angle. Let's take a look. Very nicely struck. The speed's there. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the ball count here. Well, I know Wade has three. At least. Because he just picked them at up least three. in the side pocket. He's going to pocket his 13. Now, if he's got a little angle, he can go forward with this shot aggressively and break up some of those balls, which, hey, boy. He got lucky. Okay. Well, he got lucky that the 13 came in between the pocket and the 4, not allowing Danny to pocket the 4. But still, there is a combination out there. I mean, it's not really that easy, but it is pocketable. Yeah, but had he made it, look how easy a run out he would have had. That's that's, that's true. <laughs> good. Oh, that ball skidded on him. I told you, he got lucky. Yeah, he certainly did get lucky uh, in that regard. He's just going to try to remove both of these balls, which he did. Now I think we're in for a pretty long game, unless uh, Mr. Well, not aggressive. Well, Danny, uh, none of Danny shoots to seven. If Danny shoots to seven, we not we may not be in for a long game. Uh, would you uh, entertain the thought of kicking behind uh, uh, the short cushion and going up table with the cue ball from this position? Well, he is elected to do something else. Yeah, I understand. I, I agree. It would not have been a bad shot because it would have been over on your side. You know, and then you protect the balls on your side of the table. You make it more yeah. difficult for him to neutralize the position. Yes. Because in one shot, Wade could shoot a ball into the cluster and, and, uh, on the first diamond, open them up, and he'd really have a superior position. So Danny really is... Uh, at a disadvantage at this time, even though it may not appear that way, the way the balls are positioned, they can be repositioned very easily. 
And that's another reason why I would like to have gone up table. Yes. That was a very aggressive shot that he took right there, although, you know, he had some protection of not going up the table, apparently. Well, I, yeah. I didn't think he could control that cue ball that well from there. He's banking a six ball. Now, he has some liberties of doing this because all the balls that were on the side rail towards Wade's pocket are actually, you know, will not fit. Now let's take a look to see where exactly the six ended up because you know what kind of a shot's available and I don't think Wade is opposed to shooting it. Oh, and that's crossing. Can Wade oh. make this 14 well, ball, it, which oh. is on the rail there? I believe he can. Now if he makes this, he could possibly get position on the six ball there too. Yeah, he was able to make it. He did get positioned. Now he will bank the six ball that you see there across the table toward his pocket. Just letting the cue ball go down the the table. Well, it looks like the four may have room past the 12. Uh, the, you know, the way he shot the the, uh, the six certainly suggests to me that the four might have room. He's looking at it right now. This is game number three. The match is tied up in one game apiece. It did have room. He hit it very cleanly. <laughs> so did. Now he's going to shoot the yellow ball. And once again, perfect cue ball position and, and if speed. he stops, just dead right there. He's got the 12 ball next. And I think that'll be probably his game ball. It might be out now. I'm not yeah. sure of the score. Alberto allowed that cue ball to escape yeah, the area where he wanted to end it up in. And exactly. all of a sudden... I tell you, you cannot leave way to shot. He will, <laughs> he will shoot you. I, know, I think that's it. And Wade Crane wins game number three. Yeah, it looked like Danny had uh, complete control of the match in game number one. He stole the he stole the first game and they end the break away from uh, Wade. I know. And in game number two, he had a big advantage, and all of a sudden, Wade came back and won not only game number two but number three also. Well, I'll say this much: Wade shot his way out of those, and he got very lucky in that one ball that he missed down there, 13 ball he missed toward his pocket and left Danny that. A little bit of a ticklish combination, which he missed. Mm -hmm. And that turned the game completely around. Well, Wade knows how to shoot himself out of trouble because he's done that so many times in the past. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, is that uh, correct or not? <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever gotten out of trouble with you, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> Diane's informing us that he shot his way out with her a couple of times. Oh, Wade Gray broke the balls in game number four. No, Danny broke the balls in game number four. So he's made a pretty good break here. Well, it's a very crucial game for Danny because if he loses this game, he oh, loses the match. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is a crucial yeah. one, Bill. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. Okay. Yes, yes. Well, that's good cue ball control there. Especially if he's able to freeze it behind now. the two. Danny would like to see the bottom part or the right-hand side of the 10. I don't believe he can see the right side of the 10 to bank it into the stack. If he can hit it at all, where he can hit this side rail over here, that would be the shot. He has another shot there, the three ball, banking it toward his pocket. Let the cue ball go forward and see the seven and the one, the yellow ball up there? Mm -hmm. If he did, you know, just kiss off the seven, come over on Wade's side. And if, if he, he could, happened uh, yeah. to make the three... You know, I don't think it's a very risky shot. If there's no chance of him going into the 12 from this position, I like your shot a lot. I don't think he'd be going into the 12. But then I, I like he's the, elected to shoot this 15 ball. The 10. He's looking yeah. at the 10 here. Now he's looking at, uh, I don't know. <laughs> there's so many different know. shots he can to choose, so it's very difficult to read their mind. I ought to put a microphone on each one of the players and let them tell you what they're trying to do. Can you do that next that, time? That would be a good women? idea. <laughs> <laughs> we could tape their mouth with the tape. <laughs> okay, he looks like he's going to uh, come off the 14 beating and put Danny behind the two here. Excellent, excellent choice. But he's looking at that eight ball. <laughs> <laughs> but that 12 ball will pass the two into the corner pocket. And that's the problem with the eight ball. 
And also the yeah. three ball You're sticking right. out there, no, too. The eight ball, you can't shoot that. I think, a, I think your selection here is very good. This he's coming off the... No, he's not. He's kicking it to two ball. Kicked it pretty good. Wow. <laughs> We got a comment, a grunt out of Diane on that, trying to get it to go in. You know, after you watch a player execute a shot like that, you kind of wonder whether or not that wasn't really the, 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 the correct shot. But uh -huh. are you guaranteed to do that 50% uh, of the time? <laughs> Lucky here. Wow, that's really a happen. trick shot there. That's How about that shot? <laughs> Woo. He got by the cue ball, too. I think he surprised Danny. You know, Danny has been around for a long time. I mean, it's hard to believe that he's 64 years old. I've known him for many, many years. And he has won pool tournaments in four de decades. Now, you know, that's pretty pretty much of a longevity to have that. It certainly is, and what an accomplishment that is, too. He just recently won a tournament in France. Two of them in the last that's, year. That's incredible. And he's been invited back over there for uh, teaching lessons. And then he's just going to shoot this 10 ball, two rails. Watch it come down near the three in his pocket. No, he didn't do that. I'm very surprised. But he moved all the balls off of So he was center. somewhat productive. He didn't actually reposition the 10 ball in there or close to his pocket. But he did eliminate both balls from Wade's side of the table. And when you can do that, you're productive. Wade's just going to shoot the 15 ball, just let the cue ball go down here to the end rail. Now look at the four ball in relation to the uh, to a Wade's pocket, the 11-4 combination. It will not go. If Danny leaves him up table, is there a possibility that he could make no, that? No, no. Danny's shooting a seven ball here. And should he make it, he would, he would probably, probably win, win this game. game. Yes. If he makes it, he's got to hold it up a little which he did. Look at this shot. Now, folks, that's a good shot is all I can tell you. That's better than a good shot. <laughs> you were kidding. Look where he put the cue ball, too. He'll shoot the six, just draw the cue ball over into the yellow ball, or maybe he might just follow it and come out for the one ball. No, he's just going to tickle it. Now he'll shoot this three, and he's just going to draw the ball up for the yellow ball. There's the yellow ball. He wants a little angle. Mm -hmm. It was it was very crucial for him to end up with an angle on the one to drop nicely for the 12, possibly yeah. opening up the rest of the balls. Yeah. I think he's lost his market. He's going to have to drill this in very hard and come off the rail. Yeah, he did not want to get straight in. Now he's got a very crucial shot on this 12 ball. Now, whether he wants to take it or not, if he makes it, he figures to win the game. If he misses it, he figures to lose it. Yeah, I wish I knew what the score was. That would be a, you know... Pretty good. Uh, He's shooting it. He's just going to drift this in. He missed it. No, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> I like that call. Boy, not by far. I was surprised you were able to know that uh, when you hit it. <laughs> Even Danny is that was going to happen. <laughs> and he's very fortunate he didn't leave a shot there. It'd be four to two. Now Wade's just going to shoot the 14 into the 12 and knock the 12 out. And it did not work for Wade like it did for Danny. Danny did the same shot and he came back over in his hole. Yeah. Looks like it's four to th five to two, Danny. Five to two. We'll just say it's five to two, Di Liberto. Six to one. Six to one. Di Liberto, Di Liberto trails in the match two games to one. If he's able to win this game, he'll send it into a fifth and final game. With Wade breaking the balls. And the break the break is very big, yes. even though it hasn't proven to be that It hasn't big. been in this particular match. No. You know, they have seesawed back and forth, not winning on their own break. And that's quite unusual, yes. considering how well the balls break on this table. But, of course, De Liberto really didn't break him that well, but he did pocket a ball in the break, but they didn't open up nicely. Four-inch pockets. The bank pool finals were on this table, as all the other finals are going to be on this table. And uh, right now, the table really isn't playing as difficult as it will be later on in the evening. 
I, it is just playing great. You could not ask for any better playing conditions than this table. Now, I think some of the other tables uh, don't have quite the light in. They don't have the heat from the lights from Accustat Video Productions. And uh, that makes the playing conditions, to me, it's just perfect. Yeah, the lights over this table in particular seem to have dry out the table. So whatever humidity is out there on this table, the, the lights dry it out to yes. enable this, pl this table to play much nicer than the other tables. Now Danny's jacking up and trying to shoot this eight ball a bank. I would not uh, agree with this having a six to one lead. Uh, if he makes it, he'll prove me wrong, but it could a lot of things go wrong here. Well, considering the way the other balls are positioned, he's really not going to suffer much of a consequence if he doesn't put it down. And he hit it with good speed, so therefore oh, he, he certainly did. Yeah, the speed, the speed that he hit it with, really. Uh, yeah, the worst thing that could happen to that particular shot, it was uh, he could have hit the corner, which he came very close to. It still would not have uh, probably caromed all the way over to this side, but that was excellent speed over the cue stick jacked up there. That was a good shot. Now, Danny has to be pretty careful here. I like this coming off the 11. He will bank at the 11 ball. No, I don't like that at all. Well, he's going to put the cue ball uh, where there's not going to be anything left. You know, he has two choices here. What he's thinking hit. right now, he's thinking about banking the 11, just letting the cue ball go into the... Now, he's he's shooting the 4, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't like, I like rolling into the 11, setting the 11 and the 8, and just repositioning the cue ball. Hmm. Well, he may get away with it. He did. Well, he still left the bank on the eight. So, you know, uh, I like creating, creating congestion. Yes. He's shooting the 11 into the eight, and not with the speed to come back down table, but the speed would leave the cue ball near that side cushion so that you don't leave any offensive shot. You create congestion. You make the rest of the, uh, the rack. Well, Wade hit that beautifully. Play a little easier. Yes, it did. Yes, he did, I, I mean, should say. <laughs> all he had to do was hit it with about another uh, couple of calories there, and he would have had it. This is a pretty tricky shot. I wouldn't be surprised to see Danny go, go for the 11 here. He's going for the 11, but he's also playing safely. And watch the cue ball be down here on the end rail when this shot. But the out. nine's a big ball. He doesn't have to get down there. Which, okay, he's barely the missing the nine, but he was able to get down there and pocket the ball. So, you know, he, he couldn't see much of the eight, so therefore there wasn't any reason why he should have fooled with the eight because that yeah. was costly, too, if he happens to miss hit it, which it was a good chance that he could have, would have. So he opted to go offensively, and I really can't argue with that. I thought that was the right shot. Well, he had what I call almost a free shot. Built-in safety. Yeah. Unless that ball would go over there and jump to corner pocket and come back out straight yeah. in. But that's, you know, at that speed, it's kind of hard to do. He's just going to pocket this and bring the cue ball back. On the end rail here in the center. It's been a great offensive match. Yes. Wade being behind here, Billy, what's he going to do? Well, I would, I would like to, I would like to do something productive here. I, I, uh, I would like to block him from that eight. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. That's an excellent shot. Okay, he, he was, can hit the eight. Yeah, but, but I don't think uh, he wants to fool with it. Yeah. I don't think position. he does either. No. Because he could scratch. He could get a double kiss. Uh, a lot of bad things could happen to him here. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's going to... He's electing to kick it. Let's see. Oh, if he can kick at it, that'd be better. Still, yeah, he that's got good. away with it. Yeah, too. Well, if he could kick at it, that, that's fine. That was an excellent kick. It certainly was. Wade's trying to figure out a way to keep the balls in play because he needs them all. So therefore, it's his his job to put them in play where if he, if he gets a shot in one of the subsequent shots, he'll be able to run some balls. Well, Daniel just... Hit this ball, knock it back down the table. It's about as close to the end rail as he can get it down there. Let's see how close he's got it. Yeah. 
Not no, too bad a lag. No big mystery there for DiLiberto. Just <laughs> reposition the ball near Wade's pocket. Up Wade's table. liable to scratch on this shot if he would have tried to make it. What did I call that? Well, <laughs> you better be careful. Well, he got a lot done with that shot. He opened up the balls a little bit at the table, you know, so therefore, you know. He's going uphill, as you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I trying like, to make this interesting. I, I like this situation when I've got the seven and the other guy's got one, you know. <laughs> I just wanted to make this a little more interesting. That's all okay. by saying he opened up the balls a little bit. <laughs> all, right. all right, Danny's going to close up. He's going to close up a couple of more. You oh, know, watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I think I'd a little bit Diane's too far, rooting Diane. for Wade, of course, and she said Danny's in a lot of trouble. Uh, she was playing off of what I said. I know it. <laughs> oh, that's I want nice, you guys nice to just look at shot. some of these shots these guys are making. Now, he stole one there. And he could possibly steal a couple more if he wants to shoot this 10 ball and probably draw back for the four ball. Yeah, or well, just. I don't think he has the angle to do he that. He may not, but that's what he'd like to do, I know. But he's not opposed to banking the four, playing shape for the, for the eight, possibly. Yeah, but he can't very well uh, bank the four or leave that shot in case he's banking this 10. He's got to play the safety on the four ball. He's trying to get over there. Watch him try to park the cue ball behind the four. Oh, he had the angle to do that. He didn't make it, though. He, he had the angle to do that. Yes, he did. Okay, let's uh, take a look what's, what's available for Danny here. Quickly, he jumps to the four ball, shooting the four. I don't know. There is only one shot here. Now, I think it's the four ball. No question about it. The four ball being the ball up there at the top left-hand corner. And the cue ball will then go two cushions. Side, he would have position on those two balls there eight, down ten. here. If, if he this hit, one should happen to go, he will score three balls. If he hits it accurately, he can use the eight and the ten as blockers too. Mm -hmm. He would like to hide him from the eight at least. Well, he wasn't able to do he that. He hit it just. Uh, it was a tough shot. Very tough shot to execute. And Danny's going to try to move these balls back. He's going to hit this eight back into the ten. I, I don't know about that shot, uh, you know, because you're going to leave some sort of a bank there for sure. Well, he was moving balls off of his side. He hit it a little hard. He yeah, got he hit little, it pretty hard. He got a little lucky that ball struck one of the balls down at the other end and uh, didn't come all the way back down here. He's trying to bank this ball and play position on the ten ball. Let's see what happens. Uh, yes, wow, he did. what a hit. I mean, that's really a nice hit. Pocketing <laughs> the 13, too. Yes. That's another plus for him. <laughs> he could bank the 15 here, too. Then he would have almost every ball down table. I would definitely uh, bank the 15 here. Danny looked up here and says, I can't play him safe anywhere. And, uh, I, I opt to go for the 15 here. He needs them all. I, I like the 15. This is a difficult shot. The 15 is right in front of Plus him. Plus, the ball goes on the spot. Absolutely. Too. Big. I think this is a mistake. Wow. <laughs> My, is he pocketing well. You said that right. There's no question what he'll do here. He'll bank just the bank eight, the eight, pocket eight, the 15. Two goes on the foot spot, double bank the one. Everything's I don't down think the he'll pocket the 15. <laughs> he's just going to roll this ball. <laughs> well, what the heck? Let's get well, he might be. He might be. He's trying to pocket the 15. Billy, you almost called him. <laughs> Come on. He's done everything else. I mean, why not? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. He's yeah, got uh, the right. three balls that are, four balls that are left. He's got three of them in circulation or in scoring position. And you really, it's hard to argue, you know, the point that he didn't shoot the right shot because now look at the position. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> no, One really. mistake here is game side up. That's right. It's over almost. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you a shot right here, if you want to really be aggressive, is you bank the 15 across corner and knocking the 13 over to the rail and back out here on his side. 
It's not a bad yeah, shot. Yeah, that, that because of the, because he has to hit the 15 very thinly, and uh, that'll get a lot of heat, a lot of hit on the 13. 13, and then uh, 13 will come all the way back over here. Is there? Is, does he have a three railer on the eight? Is that possible? He's got a two railer on it or a one railer. I didn't particularly like that. He got away with it. He's got them all in circulation now. In that wasn't a bad it. shot because he, he positioned the cue ball mm -hmm. in a good spot. Danny can't come off this side of the 13. Runs the risk of scratching if he does. Well, I can tell you what's going through Danny's mind. He's going to shoot the nine ball into the eight. The nine coming off the eight, going toward his pocket, and the eight going in the same direction. You watch. Oh, so it's a pretty, uh, it pretty offensive shot considering he only needs one. I agree. You know, now he's but put he a ball in circulation, but he hit him well. But he, he sure he, did. He had to go he in sure that did. direction. He sure did. I don't know if it was a fair trade off or not, but it looks like now it was. He has Wade in a lot of trouble with this shot. I think uh, Wade probably should just kick softly. I'll tell you what Wade will probably do. He'll probably shoot the nine and go three rails and hopefully make it. Can, can, and have position on the 15. Can he drop behind the nine off the 13, or doesn't he have the angle to do that? He's banking the eight ball. No. He better hopes that hits the point. He was trying to hit three rails. But that 15 is a, you know, it's an easy bank for him. I know. He was trying to control the cue ball down here on the end rail. That's difficult. I agree. He was in a tough spot. Oh, hit it well. Hit it well. I tell you, Wade would love to go for that nine ball and draw his cue ball down here <laughs> on a big pocket table. If he saw it, I, I think he'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look what he's looking he shoots, at. He sh I don't know if he can reach it opposite hand, is he? Because he shoots so he's well. He's going to shoot this hand. 13 the same way he tried to shoot the nine last time. He's trying to make this three this rails. Is this is throwing caution watch, to the watch, wind. Watch here. it. Three rails. Now he blocked the 15 with he the shot. He don't have the speed. Usually. Does he have the speed? It almost got there. I'm not sure. I, well, I'll tell you what. He, it looks like he's left him an awkward angle on the 15. I don't know if he can hold the cue ball from, from not hitting the 15. <laughs> on the you well, what? you know, it's he hit it pretty, pretty good. If he got it just a little harder. He's left him a pretty tough angle here if he... If he uh, Ops to bank the 15. He must be able to hit the 13. He's looking like No, that. I don't know. I don't know I'll if he can hit what, the 13. He has gotten back here. into the game here. He looks like he's got him in a little trouble here. I'll tell you what I'd shoot here. I'd, I'd shoot the 15-13 combination bank. I'd, I'd, I'd get the 15 He's up the table. this ball and trying to just go forward with the cue ball. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if he banks the nine, he can win from here. <laughs> <laughs> I, would not, I would not let him shoot that, but I, he should find something a little easier than that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know whether you folks out there could hear that. Diane sitting up here in the booth with <laughs> so He could not shoot that nine ball up there for his for bond uh, money. Uh, well, he shouldn't lose How his about position. yours? <laughs> yeah, yeah. shot it for mine. Okay. <laughs> if he doesn't shoot the nine, he's going to lose his position. I mean, this this position will deteriorate like that if he doesn't shoot the nine. So be it, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you don't shoot the nine? Take well, a scratch. Take a scratch. That's not a bad idea. He's just trying to knock it over there and possibly kiss it off to thirteen, take it out of circulation. Mm. You know, he was really in a tough spot. He, he was, and he took an aggressive shot at it. He was, a, But you could only get one with that shot. You know what I mean? You could only well, if he had made it, he could have gotten more than one. You, don't, you think so? Well, there's the 13 ball right well, he, there. He tried to hit it off the 13, bank it off the 13. Oh. You see, he tried to bank it off the 13. He was trying to make it straight in, uh, I, I don't think. know. I, I, think. I don't know about that. I think he tried I to bank it off the 13. <laughs> 
Well, we all know what he's going to do here. He is going to shoot this eight ball. If he wants to really be aggressive, he just stuns it in there and draws the cue ball up there about where the chalk is there on the side of the rail. Uh, oh. He got the cue ball up there. Well, he's left handing a pretty good bank here. It's free. Nothing really can go wrong for Danny. Yeah, this one I think is the game. Mm, looks like it's a little... No, it isn't. That's game number four. DiLiberto ties up the match. Two games apiece and breaking the balls. Actually, that was a big oh, no, game. no, Wade's breaking the balls. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, that was a big game for both players, of course. If Danny lost it, he would have lost a match. So, therefore, it was a much bigger game for him than it was for Wade. At least Wade has another shot at it here. Well, this has, has been a really entertaining match <laughs> at, at this point, I tell you. I yeah. mean, they have really showed us a lot of offensive uh, shots and uh, coming back from, you know, deficits and, and, and playing well. Both players are playing well up to this point. Immediately, Danny does what Beanie does, checks the stack. <laughs> yes, he was balls. looking at that two ball, which is the corner ball. There. It occasionally comes out and it will go, but there's nothing there in that group of balls, except if he should happen to hit the ten ball real hard into the eight, hitting the eight, and the nine, hit, kissing off the two. And going <laughs> in the ball. That's what he's looking at. But that's a very aggressive shot. Well, he's not elevating, so he's not really hitting anything with power. He's just hitting the six ball on his side and putting the cue ball down behind the four ball. Okay, he's just trying to knit his way out of the break. Trying to neutralize. Well, that's a pretty it. good start right there. He yeah. at least has a ball on his side. Now, Wade is <laughs> contemplating banking the ten ball. One, two, three rails. And uh, hopefully making it. I'd be thinking about taking the scratch here, kicking it into the stack, one cushion if if I could. Kicking into the stack, eventually ending He's up. He's banking this ball three rails. I don't know if uh, Danny has an angle to bank the four ball. It looks kind of uh, close from here. I think it will bank, but he'll just slow roll his ball in. Hit it nicely. He held it up too much. Well, it went up the hill. I think it goes up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was hard to make it come back there without kissing the cue well, ball. Yeah, I think uh, it just drifts up the hill a little. Wade's kicking at this ball, and hopefully when the cue ball will come into it and take the cue ball up and park it right. In the stack, yeah. it. That's what he had in mind, yeah. to see where the cue ball was headed. You're he better to it. overdo that than underdo it. Absolutely. And what had he hit it, it real good, the cue ball would have gone yeah. up against the nine ball there, which you can see the yellow ball there in that cluster of balls. That's and what he was trying to do. And when I said you're better off overdoing that, what I meant was applying more English, getting deeper behind the four ball, so you cut it more, and the cue ball will then pick up speed. You can't afford to hit it thick because if you do, that's the result you're going to get, leaving a return shot. You know, he held it up again. Up the hill, yeah. He went to school on that shot before and uh, evidently didn't learn very much. Well, if there's nothing dead in the stack, he's got only one shot here. He will shoot that green ball to six ball right there and make it hit into the pack there and put the cue ball all the way down to the end rail. See where he's trying to figure out which ball to hit. They will give him the greatest amount of, you know, balls over on his side. And this is referred to as a power shot by uh, bagging a ball into the stack, opening up the stack in, uh, in, in balls on your side of the table. He also is contemplating or thinking about just hitting this three ball and knocking a couple of balls over and leave the cue ball near the four ball. And he played one of your shots out of the stack. Yes, he did. And the he only found. reason you weren't able to pick it out, because from our vantage point, you couldn't see it. You could not see it. <laughs> I agree. I knew he was playing something over towards that thing when he didn't shoot the six ball into that group of balls. He got a little unlucky that the cue ball ended up way up where it is. Surely he thought he'd have a shot at the four ball on that one. 
Let's take a look at the ball count here. Four, eight, 12, 14. That's the first ball that has been pocketed in this final game. Match is tied up at two games apiece. No, he doesn't want to allow Danny to see the five. Okay, he's going back down the table. I don't know about that shot. See what he's done there? He's opened up balls on Danny's side of the table, and I don't think that was a fair trade-off. He could have, I felt like, just stopped the cue ball right there and done equally as well and had Danny up against the 9 and 13. See, what he did there was he did something that Danny would have liked to have done for himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, anytime you do that, I don't think that's... It's going to work well for you because now the balls are opened up on Danny's side of the table. Danny's going rail first. No, he didn't go rail first. Yeah, he did. He did go rail first. And look what okay. happened. That was really an unexpected thing. So the ill-fated De Liberto steps back from the table. Wade Crane has a shot. I don't know how many balls he can get. That five ball looks like the coupe is going to go into that. And after that happens, what's going to happen, I don't know. And the balls are all on Danny's side of the table. Opened yes, they up. are. You should better not miss this one because it would boo you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Wade likes to play under adverse conditions for some reason. I mean, I, I, I just believe that. that. What do you think about that, Diane? Sadist. <laughs> Possibly sadist. <laughs> <laughs> He's cutting this nine ball in. I think he'll make it to him. Okay, he was. He tickled the five ball and put it in a very good position. He certainly did. Uh, he was going to go into the five. He went into the five uh, just about, you know, very, very little uh, movement from the five. That's what he wanted to get from it. What he will do here is he'll pocket his five ball, and he's drawing the cue ball over into it, and he has a four-eight combination. And also he has his ten ball down here. And it looks like he's ended pretty straight on the ten, so therefore he's really limited in what he could do with the cue ball. And this isn't a type of an angle that I would try to force and try to do something or cheat the pocket. Once again, this is a tough angle to cheat the pocket with. Four-inch pocket and try to cheat it from this angle, you're going to create some problems for yourself. So you have to be pretty careful. Hitting it a little bit too hard, but he does have a bank on the 14 here, Beanie. Yes. And with a two ball, is, is a ball that will probably impede the progress of the cue ball, keeping him in line for the 4-8 combination if he's able to bank the 14 here. If he misses this, he's going to leave a bank on the one ball, the yellow ball. But he hit it with good speed. He did leave a bank on the one, but would you shoot this bank here? Let's check out the score. <laughs> I think the crane has all the balls that are off the table. Let's get the column. Three, six, nine, eleven. Four to nothing. Banking the one seems to be a little more appealing now. You trail four to nothing. It opens up the it opens up the balls real nicely. The seven goes, the four goes. Banking the one could be a, a game winner here. Yes, it would turn the game around and make it about equal if he makes it. He did not make it. But he really didn't sell out and uh, an offensive shot, at least that, now that left, I can see. He left Wade in a very difficult position here that he has only got uh, the possibility of banking the seven ball. And uh, maybe, I don't know, he can he can do a couple of things here. If he really wants to be aggressive, he can try to bank the seven, but I don't think that's a very good option. The other thing is he could, uh, well, let's see what he's trying to do here. He's trying to shoot the four into the one and knock it away, which he did very well. Well, I tell you, he really got a lot done with that shot. He cleared Danny's side of the table and got himself out of the trap momentarily. I don't know if he'll be back in another trap shortly, but right now I think he's worked his way out of uh, deep trouble. And with a 4 nothing lead and a ball hanging in his pocket, I'm certainly sure he'll accept that. I would but he'd be <laughs> very happy. Now he's got a 5 nothing lead and the key, the case game. And so I think... Uh, Wade is a big advantage in this game right now. Yeah, the last shot he shot was probably one of the biggest shots he shot so far in this match. Even though yeah. it wasn't as pretty as a lot of the shots he shot, it was certainly as effective. Yes. And Danny's looking for a way to keep the balls down here. And it's very difficult in this position. I, what I would do here, if I would shoot that four ball way down in the left-hand corner pocket there and just try to make it or leave the cue ball right around in there. That's an excellent choice. If you don't know what to do, you might as well just do something simple and leave distance. Yes. 
That way, you know, distance is always an ally, so therefore take advantage of it. And you know, the three ball is a big ball, too, because it, it blocks the six and the seven, so he can't really fool with the six or the seven weight, that is. Now, he's not going to gain a whole lot with this three ball. He might get it down here just below the side pocket. I didn't think he gained anything with that. In fact, he took the three almost out of circulation. Now, Wade uh, doesn't need to do anything offensively here and force something because he has a five-nothing lead. He has a six-nothing lead. He's shooting a 12 ball here. Just going to slow roll it in, knock the 13 away, and uh, hard enough to get one ball. Ooh, See, he, he shouldn't here. force anything offensively there because it, it, it was 5 nothing with those 10 balls on the table. Now it's 4 nothing. De Liberto has ball in hand. All balls are positioned nicely for De Liberto. The door is really wide open here, Beanie. He's, they're open to run 7 balls for him right here. Let's see, 4-5. Oh, I see. There's an extra ball up there that I didn't see. The Danny's ball. positioning the cue ball to play shape for the 13, and also at the same time leave himself a nice angle on the 13 to drop nicely for the balls on the other side of the table. See the angle that he's able to attain from the position he put the cue ball in. Now, with his ability to run balls, being he, it looks like he should be uh, in good shape when he leaves the table. I I have to agree because all the balls, if you notice, every one of them fit in his pocket. He's just going to shoot this 15 ball and just draw the cue ball around for the 12 or the 14. Going to end up for the 12. A little closer to the side cushion that he wanted in yeah. the angle that he's left himself on the 12 seems to be a little flat. He's going to have to elevate and draw back. And in doing that, he's going to lose a little bit of accuracy. And sometimes that ball comes, it becomes very difficult to pocket. I think he'll do this. Ooh, he jumped. He jumped uh, instead of you know drawing back, he jumped. He hit the more of the center of the cube ball. Really didn't get the type of action he, he wanted to get and needed to get. But uh, nevertheless, he still pocketed the ball, and he allowed the, the match to to, re to remain you know uh, yeah, a competitive, he made competitive the ball. match. Okay, let's see. There are now. Seven balls left on the table. Crane has four. De Liberto has four. And this is the type of a match uh, we figured to see. And the entire match has went this way. Why should it stop now? Four, four balls apiece and uh, final, final game in the match. Yeah, before the match started, it was a pretty even match. Yeah. You, know, you wouldn't know which side to take. Yeah, and that's the way I saw it. You can't ask for any better of a match than showing the, the equal uh, skill of each player. Daddy's just going to try to bank this ball, let the cue ball go into the side rail, and possibly end up around near the four ball. There's the cue ball. Boy, he hit that nice. I don't know if it's good. It tried to come out of, come out on him at the end there, but he yeah. really hit it nice. He didn't control the cue ball like he wanted to, though. He got away with it. So Daddy's just going to slow roll this six ball, just hard enough to get it to his pocket, one rail across corner. Yeah, Looks like he's going to pocket this ball, sure Beanie. Is, with position. That'll give him six. He'll be playing for two. He'll uh, he'll have the one ball, and if he wants to get a little offensive-minded, he'll play position for the bank on the seven. I think the uh, the difficulty of the shot would uh, force me to try to just play the uh, one ball, but not him playing position for the bank on the seven. This is game set and match. <coughs> well, he did not make it. He hit it short. And Diane sitting with us up here in the booth said she he left a cross corner bank. You know your one pocket, I see. All right, let's see if he can make this. I don't know if he can make this. It's uh, looks like it's uh, it laying rather high. awkwardly. It yeah. didn't look like he could pocket it. It was more of a stiff, if you will. Oh, yeah. that's a good shot. He hit it with a good high ball. Notice how the cue ball reacted with that top spin that he had on the ball, forcing it to go off the cushion and then back toward the cushion again. That's a good shot. Now Wade's got to get the balls down near the pockets where he can get them back into circulation. 
there is an excellent shot to get a couple of them in circulation if the three would have fallen. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely wanted the three to fall. Wade needs all the balls, and he certainly can't get them from, from the position they're in right now. Danny, on the other hand, is quite delighted the three didn't fall, and he likes the position the balls are in. What he wants to do is he wants to play ball for ball from this position, giving himself a better chance of winning the match. It's hard for him to fool with the seven, considering where it is so closely to the side. If he comes off the side of it, he runs the risk of scratching in the corner. He don't like that shot, so therefore he shouldn't force himself to shoot it. If I was him, I'd come off the four some way. No, he don't want to shoot the shot. He's tried to shoot the shot two or three times now, and he's pulled himself back off the shot. So that's an indication possibly this might not be right here, you know? You know what? He is elected to try to hit it off the point there and play it safe. I don't like it, but that's what he tried to do. So he's, but well, it just wasn't a right shot. He knew it, but he refused to listen to himself. And when you do that sometimes, when you don't listen to your stomach, you know, know. ooh, this feels bad. Ooh, I can't do this, you know? And then when you force it, something bad it usually happens. He is forced. He's going to fire this ball, man. Okay, now Danny lost that ball because of his stubbornness, I think. Yes, he could have done a lot better than that on it. I thought he, the selection well, was I hope shot, he doesn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> the Diane said up here said, I hope Danny didn't, uh, Billy said, uh, made a remark that Danny, hope he didn't hear that. <laughs> Danny said, Diane said, I hope Danny didn't buy the tape. <laughs> Okay, that back up table with the three, but he has left the bank on the three. Yes, I agree with you 100% here. He will try to bank this ball, just slow roll it over to his pocket and hopefully make it. And if he does, he was back in the game. Well, he's in the game, but uh, he would have been a lot better into it. That's a good shot, hit it with good speed. And he repositioned the three ball, put it in a very difficult difficult uh, position on the table for Wade. And it's gonna be hard for Wade to uh, to do anything offensively here, and, and he's gonna be really hard pressed to come up with a good defensive shot too. But he can, if he just softly rolls on and, and cuts the three toward the upper right hand corner softly, I think that'll be about his only viable shot here. This is what I like about this game. You can shoot any ball on the table. You can shoot it many different ways. Now, you just look at this uh, fertile shot, I call. Uh, excellent shot. Now, you see how many ways you can do these things and do it and make it? Uh, so I thought it was a very good shot. Excellent shot, especially when you look at the results of this shot. Yes. Nothing offensively, so therefore he certainly has done his job. Danny wants to try to reposition. Now, he has to be careful he doesn't scratch here. He's like, you know, he has to be careful. Billy? Never wow. A <laughs> Never a doubt. <laughs> yeah. But once again, he's accomplished what he set out to he do. Sure he's left did. him long, which is always an ally, and he left him a very tough hit once again. Well, he's going to try the same This thing. is more difficult this than the last one. a lot more difficult. He better hit as close to that side pocket as he can there. He hit it again. Look at this speed. And it looks like he's gotten the same results. <laughs> he's a little bit different. Yeah, Danny, Danny can can't shoot the, yeah, He can two rail. Danny this, can't so. shoot the same shot he shot last time. <laughs> he can two rail this, so. And he really didn't hit it with the speed that it uh, required to pocket the ball. Well, those were two excellent kick shots. That well, they the sure were. Ball. You know, not only did he have the insight to see that that shot was available, but he hit it with accuracy, and the speed was just hit me, uh, remarkably well. Danny saying to the three ball, slow up, I'm losing my, my market on the bank here, but he, I think he has. He's gonna try to bank at it. No, he hit that, I thought he hit it well when he hit it, but uh, yeah. evidently it, 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 he didn't hit it as well as I thought. He's left way to bank cross, cross corner. Diane, what did he leave here? Another cross corner. <laughs> she, said, she recognizes this shot. A cross corner. Mm. 
Well, he's going to get it. Yeah, he certainly is. Well, this match is really coming down to a dead even match like we well, picked it. It looks like that it can't get any closer unless it's game ball of a piece. You know, <laughs> one know. ball left on the table. Danny needs one ball. Wade needs two. This entire match has gone this way, by the way. The player that's been, that was ahead some way lost the lead. The other player coming back, either winning the game or making it close. So, therefore, this certainly this match hasn't lacked excitement. Excitement is one thing this match certainly hasn't lacked. <laughs> I'll tell you, they put each other in the hot seat. He has to be careful not to pocket the four here. And he left a little bank on the eight ball. Yeah, it looks like he may have uh, a bank on the eight, something that he can turn, but he has to make sure he doesn't get a kiss. If he gets a kiss here, he yeah, might lose in the game. Big trouble. Oh, he missed a kiss. He wants to miss that point. He wasn't able to miss that You know, that, that was hard enough to get to the pocket, too. Oh, absolutely. He did <laughs> yes. extremely well. A little, you know, he turned it a little too much. Yes. But had that ball missed a point on that side pocket, he definitely would have pocketed the ball. It would have been a one-ball match. Now, to me here, I only have one shot that I would shoot here. I would hit the eight ball into the side rail over there near the chalk that you see up in the right-hand corner, bring it back over there near the four. Excellent yeah, shot. That's close enough. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. I read his mind there a little bit. You know, he does have a bank here with a good hit and a good yeah, stroke. I don't know if he has the stroke, though, to shoot this it's shot. It's a tough shot. He's got a shot at it, but it's a very difficult one. It'll be down toward his pocket, though. Okay, he was able to hit it reasonably well, and he did avoid scratching up in the upper right-hand corner uh, pocket, which you know also happens a little too much for the liking of the player, for, for the player that shot it, but uh, he was able to avoid scratching. Now Wade's trying to kind of cross this toward his pocket, and uh, much the side pocket. The side pocket's very big here. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Will you look at this? Well, there it is. There it is, the game ball. And this this is a very difficult position that he's left himself in. Yes, it is. What he has to do here, he has to hit this four ball with a center ball just off center and bring the cue ball over here near the chalk up in the right-hand corner. He hit it a little too hard. Well, it's okay. I no, mean, that's it's, not okay. It's okay because he still has to hit, hit the four ball fairly accurate here. And if he happens to miss hit it, he's going to scratch Danny's going to shoot at this. Absolutely, and, uh, but uh, this should, this, he can scratch this very easily the match. He over, No, he cut it. He made it. He didn't scratch. Now, how close can that be? Gee, what a match. Well, you couldn't have asked for a more exciting match, Beanie. I know that I it didn't really go the way that a lot of people wanted it to go, Diane, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, Things like that happen on occasion. Well, Billy has Diane here. <laughs> so yeah, Diane. Yeah, he's uh, free to gamble, so. <laughs> what was that? There's always a positive. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, uh, Diane, thanks a lot for stopping up and chatting with us and uh, adding some insight into, into the game and into other things. But uh, it, it, was did, a it didn't match. work out as well as, it, as you wanted it to, but uh, it was an exciting match, and uh, I, th I think that we <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you couldn't script it any better, I don't think, there. But, uh, you know, he just came out just a little too far, a couple of inches, I would say. Well, he was in a... That one shot that he chose, bleeding five and nothing, was, was crucial. Yeah, when he scratched. Yeah, yeah, when he yeah. scratched. I agreed with you, that was, you don't shoot that shot. Well, that's not uh, be too tough on the... On, on the <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough match to lose. So. They were undefeated players in the tournament, were they not? Both of them. No, they, he had bought back in, so he's yeah. eliminated, I see. Well, there's a random draw before every round, so therefore we don't know which players are undefeated because winners can play losers. Yes. Okay. You know, so it's not difficult for us to determine on who's a winner, who's a loser, who has one loss, who doesn't have a loss. But we well, were just informed that Wade had a loss, and now he's out of the tournament. But there's a good point to that, that she said that now he's free the gamble. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy, once again, I've enjoyed working with you. It's been a pleasure. We had a great match here, and uh, 
I'm going to say goodbye for Bill Weenie Beanie Staten at the Derby City Classic and Accustat Video Productions. You know the number. Give them the number. Where well, the number get. is 1-800-828-0397. And I'd like to add that it's also been a pleasure working with you, as usual. Okay, now we're going to be uh, doing an on-camera interview in just a moment. Okay, we were able to get Danny DiLiberto to stop up and chat with us a little bit after this very exciting match with Wade Crane. Danny, uh, first I'd like to congratulate you on a very well-played match. Uh, both players out there played well. You came up with a lot of great uh, offensive shots, a lot of uh, creativity. Very, very close match, to say the least. And, uh, well, anyways, how did you assess your performance in the match? And would you, looking back to the match, what do you remember most about it? Well... I don't like to say I got unlucky with a match till it's over. You know, in other words, I didn't get unlucky there at any point. But I had a dead one that could have cemented the match, and I didn't get a shot. But at any rate, as you know, in one packet, uh, uh, when you need a ball, sometimes you got to leave tough shots uh, to get your shot at the money. And he kept making them all. Everything. I mean, well, I, I never saw a guy fight so hard. Right? I mean, uh, he could have sold out on any one of those shots, and he kept making them. Exactly, and Benny and I discussed the same thing, and I mentioned to a Diane who was sitting in the booth, uh, Wade really certainly knows how to play in adverse conditions, and he, he can really come back on a player if they're not careful. And Danny it was kind of luring him, making him shoot certain shots in hopes to get a return shot to get the ball that he needed. It didn't work out, like Danny said, for him, because Wade kept pocketing the ball. I understand what you mean, and uh, sometimes it could be frustrating. But, you know, I thought... Excitement, that was one of the most exciting matches that we've had in this tournament. I mean, it was a really well-played match and very exciting. Let me ask you this, Danny. Yes. Uh, do you have a loss in the one pocket? No, no, that's 4-0. Oh. That was his second loss, so he's out. He can't buy back in. So I don't have to worry about him anymore. But I'm 4-0 and oh and still got more life, you know. I don't want to lose one, but if, in case I do, I can buy right back, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I understand you don't want to lose one, but being 4-0, oh, you're, you're, you're in a pretty good position here. And it looks like to me you've come, in, to come to this tournament prepared to play because it seems like you're hitting balls very, very accurately. Yeah, I am, but I need to do it so, so I could eat. My family could eat. You know, if you dog it, they don't eat. Well, you know, when you go to the table, you don't think about thoughts like that, do you? Uh, no, no, not really. You play the balls, you know, like Irving Crane told me a long time ago. You know, like 1963, he said, you know how to play when it's your inning, play the balls. And, and when you're going to win, you're going to win. And that helps you not fold, you know. I mean, it's very easy to fold when a guy's doing that to you. You got a game locked up, he beats you. You got another one locked up, he makes it close. You know, you can very easily faint. You feel it. But I feel in good condition, and, and that's important. You know, I, this is a sport, and if you're in good condition, you can fire back. And what Wade Crane told you, you certainly has, you certainly have followed his his, his advice because, Irving excuse me, Wade Crane, what Irving Crane, uh, what Irving Crane told you, you certainly have followed his advice right. because for the past four decades you've been able to win championships, and I don't believe uh, any other player can can uh, can say that. Is that true? That's true, and, and I thank God for that. You know, uh, but that is true, and I hope to win one in two thousand. You know. That'll be five decades, <laughs> hopefully, God willing. Well, it seems to me that you're staying in pretty good shape, and uh, you're playing extremely well right now. So, therefore, you're not too far away from that fifth dec decade. So, uh, a, year. a year, one more year. It's 2,000. <laughs> Just give me the strength to win one more after 2,000. You know, I don't, I don't think anyone will ever do it. You, don't, you might not live 50 years, <laughs> right? Well, I hope you're able to do it because, uh, you know, I've always considered you one of my good friends, and I really do like the way you're hitting the balls right now. Once again, good luck. I mean, congratulations on this match, and good luck in your upcoming matches, Danny. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot for supporting Stats. Give Pat a call, 1-800-828-0397. We'll be back in a very short while with another, hopefully, another exciting match.